So next is Harald Ullmann, who will also tell us something about barcodes. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. So it, it's a coincidence to have a session here together. So. Thank you that I may be here. Thank you for organizing here. And yeah, um, it is a big pleasure after five years. Last time I was here five years ago in, in Cologne. And basically my talk was very similar. And I want to talk about Android and Androwish implementation. And I have called it professional. The professional is more for myself to call it professional and one day we will get there, what I would call professional, but to take it um, to the end, the customer was very satisfied by the solution. So, um, yeah, it worked out. So that is so the points of my talk. And myself, you find here, that's my name. I live in Berlin, in Germany, and you find me in the chat with this shortcut on, on the, that's on the Y key. So I normally put anything on the Y key. So I'm more active on the Y key and on the call list and on the CLTs and on the chat. If anybody wants to chat with me, please send me an email and I will switch my chat on. Normally that is not the case. It just takes too much time. Thank you for that. So company Elmicon is my personal company. So it's five people and we are in barcoding. So What's called barcode is this stuff, this stuff, this stuff, and here you have an RFID tag. So that's something used in, in hospitals. We are way powerful in ISO standards. So I'm in ISO standardization. I got that from my dad who started in the 70s with barcodes. So I grew up with that subject. And yeah, I'm whether involved or responsible. So in my life, I've developed five barcode symbologies and uh, the term barcode is more used as optical readable media. So anything what is optical, what is glyphs and so on or giants. At the moment we are working on color codes for refugee passes with a, with a UN to put somewhere in a tent to press a pass, to print a passport which has certain security features like fingertips in and so on. So those are the current subjects in, in the barcoding world. Barcode is high tech. So that's also something everybody thinks, okay, that's an old stuff and so on. Unfortunately, that is not true. To do something like that, to mark a medical device, to read it and to sterilize it and so on, that is currently a demand and that's really high tech to, to do that. So it's similar to the, to the high tech coffee brewing. <laughs> it remembered me a lot because we have steam sterilization and we have all this temperature tracking and pressure tracking. That's basically what a sterilization device does. So it has all those sensors. But I think pressure there is 60 bars, so it's a bit far from your place. Temperature is a bit the same. Okay. My main tool is called ScanLink. It's a barcode data analysis and transmission tool. So it is used all over all industries worldwide. So typically a hospital buys it to do the same thing what we have just seen. So basically to have a database, to have a barcode and to enable programs which are not barcode aware to enter in some data which is origined by a barcode scan but which must be not be the same data what we have just seen. And typically into 70, 80 different systems, a hospital has many legacy systems and yeah, you need some software to handle all that. Let's go to the techniques. It looks like that, I will show it now live. It is a table widget with scroll bars, it uses Tickle. TK Windows CE, especially, I will now end up with barcode device like that. So that's a typical barcode handheld terminal, which turned devices are 30 years old and um, nowadays they merge to Android. We still have Windows CE and you can order the same device with Windows CE. So Windows CE is absolutely dead, but we still deliver it. We have 
hundreds of applications in there. The table is widget with scroll bars, and what I do is that you have an adjustable font size in the menu. So you can set the font size, and the font size tells you the scaling of the application, so you can configure the, conf the, the font size like that. So I will just show that on the, on the practical side. So that is application when you start it as a standard, so standard Windows font size. You do a scan, you have the analysis up there. And if I change the font size, I would like a pinch to zoom um, technology, but it's not here. For example, I size it way large. So what you see, and that is SVG Nano, that all those icons scale at, at any level, and they just look beautiful due to that. So, well, you just basically see nothing. And what doesn't scale is the Windows internal um, menu bar. But what you see, well, it is, if you open the menu bar, it looks like that. <laughs> so you have the small icons which are not there. There's some work to do, so that's again the professional point. But most programs avoid those things by avoiding this feature. It is an essential, essential feature to, school, to zoom the, the whole interface. I started in 96 with Tickle, Tickle 8.0, and that was the main feature what I loved, is this possibility to have this dynamic interface to say, okay, what is above, below, whatever, and you can configure it in a dynamical way that you don't have uh, a fixed layout. Yeah, and that's implemented here. What you also have seen, it took some time until it showed up, the, especially the SVG, SVG scaling takes a lot of time. It is a timing penalty of around factor of five, I would say, to use before I had here multiple PNG images and I've chosen the, the right size. I had two or three of them. But in the moment you go to Androvish, you have very variable resolution. So barcode devices have 160 times 320 dots um, resolution up to 5,000 times 3,000. So it is a range of over 10 of resolution you have. And so the scaling is really good. To, to do it. And well, I can here use my touch screen, so to scroll here or to, to do things. So the, I al always have touch screen also on Windows, and I can put configure it in a special touch mode where the size of anything what you can touch is scaled at a certain size. Or you can put off, switch touch screen mode off, then it just scales with the rest like it's done here. Okay. So that's what I didn't want to speak about, but the customer had that. And the customer request was, okay, that's a beautiful application, but we want to have it and the production line. And we have no computer there, and we have harsh environment, and so on. So can you deliver something like that on the production line? And I said, no problem, we have Androvish. We put the source code on there, and it just runs. So that's the theory, and the reality is not far from that. I would say. So at the end, the quantity of code which had to be added to make it Android aware is way little. You, so you have file systems, some files are different, you have to take care, oh, it can be started, stopped at the moment. Um, you have so screen resolution, but that was already solved. And you have the barcode scanner. The barcode scanner of the device, this is typically a device which have own barcode scanner in front, so you can press should. Uh, you don't see it. So it's a red barcode scanner in front. I will pass it around in a second so you can try. Um, you have to, to put that barcode scanner on and before in Windows C that was also always a piece of C code. Okay, so let's go over. That's the device. There's a photo. That's the device name. It has an internal image scanner. It also has a camera. We could do the same thing with Seatbar or with other barcode it gets to, to decode, but the internal barcode scanner has much more performance. That's, those are the display matrix here. So we have 800 times 480, which is for Android very low, 
but yeah, here it's a medium one. Yeah. And in my 2014 talk, I especially spo spoke about how to compile Androvish and strip it down. And now I use the great Bones built environment created by um, Christian. So I've also written anything I do is on the wiki. So a step to step instruction how to set up on Windows 10. Yeah. I'm sorry to use Windows. I started my company with Tickle also in mind to support especially Linux. I was a long time, I am on in SUSE since seven something, so one of the oldest packages which are down there. I, I owned them as a student. I never sold something on Linux. That's not true. If we have um, those small boxes which are only for displaying data, so only doing keyboard and display, those boxes are on Linux. So Eigel, Syn client, and so on. And we have software on there, which is Tickle, which is on Linux. OK. So the user interface divine design on this device. So here you have a photo. Um, we don't use the, report, the viewport stuff. Um, so it zooms like that, and so I think that's not a good idea. We have the center bar, and I thought about scroll bars, yes or not. I tested it without. Um, we need them for orientation. Otherwise, you don't know where you are here. Um, we always have buttons below here, and we don't scale the buttons. We always put them to one centimeter height. Um, I tried it with scaling, you get confused. Yeah. You can scale here, you make pinch to zoom here, you can move with a finger here to, to scroll it, you can also use the scroll bars to scroll it, so that's a, basically the, the user interface. We use auto rotation because you scan like that, but of course table data, data is better read in this orientation. Yeah, and what's very important is that we use the same source code for the desktop and for Androvish. Okay, so finger scrolling last five years ago, I presented that was a big part of script and someone said, it's very easy, you just do it like that, that works, and it's true, it works. So we have to do two bindings and this one is for the table list. So on the table list, um, you have to use the body tag to, to bind it, and what you have to do, or what I did, is especially to disable the selection on the, on the table list, otherwise it also selects if you try to, to scroll, it doesn't work so well. Okay, and this theme also works for, well, I've tried it on Canvas, on text widget, it works everywhere. So basically you add those two lines and finger scrolling is done. Oh, that's great. Pinch to zoom, pinch to change font size. So I do font size scaling with two fingers. So you can try that then. Um, yeah, that is basically since 2014, I didn't change that. So it's still working the same way. Scalable buttons, images using SVG. So SVG Nano, I think, is a great thing. So I want to point a bit out here, it got quickly in the core. It got by Christian Golwitzer and Christian Werner to a package. And I decided to have the height one centimeter fix. So the first step is to find out the, the height of the display, how many pixels are one centimeter. And then I scale it to this amount of pixel. So I create the file, I get out the height of the image, and then I configure it with a, with a scale parameter. Unfortunately, by that, the image, the SVG, is rendered two times. It could be worse, it could be four times, but Christian has put a caching mis, um, mechanism in that's due to internal points. I took more than a month to understand at least the basics, and I'm sorry for all the clutter in the, in the core list not understanding what's really happening. Um, I asked Christian Golowitzer, I thought it was his work. Well, <laughs> ask the right guy, you get it. So I make some promotion to tip 545, which 
at the scale to height option, scale to height option to SVG, so we can directly say, okay, we need here 50 pixels, load it and scale it directly to 50 pixels, so we don't need the next second step. Good. The menu. The menu first was, first was here on top. That's not way Androvish style. And of course, I'm in time constraints. So what I did is I, I use a, a menu button menu and says bwitch get behind. So I have changed the bwitch get. It's a bit hackish style I'm to, to allow to have the main menu in this style here. There are some bugs in, sometimes the back menu is in front of that and so, so menu handling is, well, I would like next project to do a full screen Android-like menu, which is a replacement of the standard menu, so it would have the same parameters, so we can just say, now display Android menu and it takes the whole screen, it does what you want and yeah, you get that. Okay, the built-in barcode imager interface. I had that done before with an open source component called Barcode Reader that worked out way well on a standard um, Android device, but now I had this special scanner here and I have the scan buttons. That means that not Android is active to start it, I don't have a button press on Androvish, I have it outside and I just get information a barcode was scanned. So it's a bit other way around and I had to do that. And what I had is sample Java code. So I said, it's not, not difficult, you have tons of Java code and um, I hoped that we can do that out of the box with Androvish and after two emails it was translated to broadcast register and the callback and some commands like that. I also have documented all that on a wiki page, how I do that. I have no Java knowledge. So now I have a little Java knowledge. So thanks, Christian Werner. So how looks the final application? You can scan a code. You see the overview. It says okay or error. You can show the analysis by pushing that button. You can Save as PDF with PDF for TCL. You can show the PDF. You can add buttons here. It's not activated here um, to say, okay, show PDF. Again, activity from Androvish, activity, show PDF. That works out of the box. It's also on the wiki. And what is a bit critical, if you call the exit command in Androvish, I always got only a black screen and that's all. Um, the application didn't terminate. Well, I just removed the exit stuff and you have to use the uh, Android box one and you wipe it out anybody, anyway, anybody does that on Android anyway. And those applications are normally not stopped. The customer, it is 3M in, in Munich, um, pharma production. They said, first question was, how can I avoid that anybody can exit the application? Yeah, that they can play with the Android behind it and so on. Of course, in, in, on an industrial application, you only want the application and nothing else. Normally, you can be sure to do that. Here, I didn't find any way. A colleague of mine said, well, we can have a child security app on, which at least will um, block all the others. Okay. <laughs> um, what's quite important also, bind with will enter background. So if it goes to the background, get out of the scanner, ignore the scanner messages. So here is a binding and I also get out of the binding. So there's a plus binding mechanism. I've written something to get that out. You have perhaps seen the intensive messages on, on the call list say, telling me, don't do that. Okay, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> To about all of that, now I'm coming on the, on the practical side, I just want to pass it around. So you have here code on, you can scan, and you see what's happening, you can do the pinch to zoom. You see that it's about box and other dialogues are not very well at the moment. 
the about box tells the uh, Androvish version it's Asteroid Day. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's also an important point. It is medical devices, and in medical devices, you always look about versioning. You must know what is behind which Android version and so on, and that's why it was on the technical side important to also version the Android stuff. Okay, so, yeah, help yourself. Okay, so I'm more, I would say, a, a back end programmer. I'm sorry, not so deeply possible to add to the core after now nearly 20 years in Tickle. I'm learning, I would say, <laughs> but it is still not, not where I would to be. So I think also in, in Tickle we have, I would say, the wizards, which do the, the genius stuff, and it is okay to have some people in the background which write documentation, which do testing, and which write tests, and so on. So that's basically my role, what, what I'm normally doing. So I try to support Don Porter and, and Donald and whoever by testing. Um, yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> I do what I can. Okay, what I'm, I'm maintainer for, for BWitGit, Last action was a scroll frame empty of last child unmapped possibility. So you unmap the last child up to now. It was not possible to resize to zero. Um, we can do that now. MSG cat, I'm maintainer of that. I was wondering that the coffee machine doesn't use MSG cat for translation. Um, well, I should call it MSG coffee. I don't know to make it more attractive. <laughs> so last change there was have a custom local search list that especially for countries which have, for well, like example, Switzerland. I would prefer French, but German is okay, and then go to English if there's nothing. So you can say something like that, especially for multicultural countries. We, in Europe, we have Belgium and Switzerland, typical examples. That is, I think, a good feature. Um, TCLOO is now in MSG CAT, so that was also I think to the, the origin was René, and the help comes as usual from Donald. Thank you for that. And tip 412 was an older one. I wrote it on my own. Dynamic language and package support. That was a big patch to MSG CAT. I hope it got in the right direction. Core Windows socket driver, I worked together with Reinhardt. So we had a meeting here five years ago, I don't know, and we written the Windows core driver. I'm also always on IOCP SOC by um, David Graverou. Graverou, I don't know how to pronounce it. He's a US guy. I've wrote, have written in, in French to him with his French name, David Graverou. Speak better French than English. I'm sorry for that. And <laughs> so um, he answered, I don't speak French, sorry. And we had a good discussion. So he has advanced code and I thought it should go in the core. It didn't happen, and recently I think it was, well, who was it who wrote, now the performance with the standard Windows drivers is, is okay. I maintain TCLWS web services, so I'm involved in Rivet. What is perhaps most visibility is that I care since long time for the Visual C++ compilation possibility of um, of TCL and TK, and yeah, it normally starts sort of questions or shitstorms, but that's okay. <laughs> After 20 years, you, you, you get a bit robust, and yeah, mainly here also, I invite the core team also to, to do a decision, do we want to support it or not? We, I think we still support it, so I'll st I will continue to test it. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Good. Synth barcode generator is also something I've done. I worked in the image patch and tip 529 at a metadata possibility to images. So that's my first entry in TK core. And um, there's, I would say, in, especially in TK, there's lots of work to do. For example, one possibility proposition by Donald, I've seen all the code caring about 
um, what we don't do at the moment anymore, the requirements not, not there anymore, to have a reduced number of colors. Today we have RGB and point, all devices can do that. We don't have any more four colors or eight colors devices, but all the code is in, in Tickle, uh, in TK, and just get that out for 8.7 or whatever, I think would be a good step. Yeah, Metadata for me is started with, I need the resolution to read it and to write it, to display something in the proper size, but there are many other applications to have additional data in the image Image files today are metadata files. The image is just a side. Okay. Um, what I'm interested in also is to have faster scaling of an SVG image. You have just seen it to change the scale before it went like that. Now it makes doc, doc, doc. So you have three or four seconds to do it. Okay. So. To think about TCL, where where to go, um, you will see that also on the Android wish. If you look to the About button, I use a lot of the tapped widget, and um, I would like scrolling of tabs, and I still use the B widget version. So that's a point. Fa point I often face is to work with lists to compare that to equal, also in dicts with order and without order. Windows 8 has nice touchscreen possibilities, and we have no theme for that. That would be big work, especially because it is in written in .NET. Also, Android, we on the user interface, I think there's a lot of work to do. Thank you for the coffee machine. That was great to see it. But we agree that it is a start. So we all work a bit. And as usual in, in, in Tickle TK, we should join forth a sync how could we improve it and, yeah, to end up at the usual great result. Transparency in TK. Um, a widget with auto scales the buttons, especially to have something like a widget with a SVG button included and it automatically scales with the fonts and so on. So that would be something possible, especially if you go on the Macintosh where if a button or if an image is displayed half on half high DPE, then we have a second screen, lower DPE, and the system wants to, yeah, scales it automatically internally, so to support that. Okay, thank you, that was my talk. I want to end up with one point after the questions. So, My, my hobby is dancing, so I don't want to do a dance here. It's not the right place. <laughs> but I live in the wine region, so I've brought a wine. Sorry to bring only one, but to give something back, I want to give it to Werner <laughs> for his continuous work. Thank you. Okay, questions? The question is, where is the pizza? Okay. Oh, the smell. <laughs> oh. Uh, just uh, very quickly, because you and I will talk later. Um, there is a kiosk mode ability where you can essentially get rid of the round square buttons and really lock the app down so it's very hard to exit. Okay. Uh, I won't say impossible, but it, pretty good. Uh, it's really obscure, but I can help you with that. Um, the exit problem with the black screen, I also have. I was going to, I thought it was my fault. So it's, I'm glad you're having it too, if I can say. Uh, I'm going to end with a question. Um, I'm quite interested in your barcode generator. Um, currently, I'm using GNU barcode, which outputs PostScript, um, and it doesn't run on Android. So I'm doing an HTTP get out and then getting some PostScript and then munging that. Yes. So I'm active in Zint projects, open source project. And yeah, it's a great project. That, that sounds... And um, it is an Androvish. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds very useful. Um, locale, I decided to have two modes in my mm -hmm. app. Automatic, where I just ask Android, what mm -hmm. locale are you in? But I found often um, people would run maybe in English because their locale wasn't available. And so they, my app has different locales than Android has. Yeah, uh, but that you can do in MSG Cat cares about mm -hmm. it. You can say, okay, I first 
I have a list and it can be incomplete and so on. And you, I prefer, for example, Austrian German, second choice is Swiss German, and the third choice is, well, this other German nobody speaks but may exist. And then I speak French and then I speak Chinese and at least you can drop to English. So you can do that with MSG CAT. So I, I just looked, I was reading yeah. it. Um, yeah. Briefly, um, it looks great. Um, I would want to figure out how to implement that in a way where I still have crowdsourced translations and yeah. improvements. Yeah, you um, can. I'm finally going to end with a question, which is: Do you have experience comparing your dedicated barcode scanner with using the Android camera? And is the Android camera good enough for reading barcodes? Yeah, um, that's a professional question. So that is a way difficult question. The point to read a barcode with, first of all, you, it is the quality of the barcode. So if you do something like EIN 13, it is not a big deal and you have time. But the point is to control the camera and the quality of the camera. Typically, the camera is at infinite. It's way bad in, in reading close. And for example, especially for the iPhone, all doctors want to have iPhone, they, you have a supplemental optic you put in front to be powerful in, in close, to make powerful close pictures. So you have additional advice, devices like that. But it is, you can try the one which I distribute, you can scan like that, like that, it scans always. So you never have that performance. Yeah, at the moment. But it will, the future of course is to use internal camera. Modern devices have nine or ten cameras and of course then it is a point to control all this stuff. So to tell the camera, I don't want to have a beautiful picture and don't make image processing on it. I want to have a raw picture, which is close at 30 centimeters. Yeah. The point's also lightning, lighting. Yeah. You need a constant light, and here you use the light outside. The light of the device, which I distributed, it uses its own light. So especially if you have neon lighting, which flashes all the time, you, with an internal camera, you will never get a good picture. It will always black, white, black, white, black, white, and so you need an internal light. Yeah. Thank you for the question. <laughs> okay, so thanks, Harald. Thank you. And, uh,